Hi, welcome to Vicky Makes and Builds. Right, this is something of a celebratory video. Um, I have just recently, uh, two or three weeks ago, um, achieved 2,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel and I couldn't be more chuffed. So I would love to say thank you so much to everybody who has subscribed to the channel and shown me um, the support that you've shown me with all your comments and your likes and, you know, just letting me know what you think of, of the videos and um, all of that. It really, it really has brought me a lot of joy. So thank you so much. So in honour of that, I have decided to do a 2000 piece puzzle. And it's actually the first one I've done on the channel. I have done 2000 and something piece sections. <laughs> of a larger puzzle, but I've never done an actual 2000 piece puzzle kind of on its own. And this is one I'm particularly excited to do. It's a Ravensburger puzzle. Uh, and it is called Universal. Um, and um, I'll put a picture up so you can see, but I'll just describe it as well. It basically has iconic images from many classic movies. Uh, those include uh, Jaws, uh, we've got the big shark at the bottom, uh, Jurassic Park, and we've got big dinosaur as well. Um, Back to the Future, because you've got the DeLorean here, and E.T. Um, in the top corner, and also flying across this rather large moon uh, in the centre of the puzzle. Now, I love the image on this. As soon as I saw it, and I forget where I first saw it, it might have been Facebook, might have been Instagram, can't remember. But as soon as I saw it, I thought, oh, I really want that. And I really fancy the idea of doing a 2000 piece puzzle because I do like larger puzzles. And I actually think a 2000 piece puzzle will fit on my puzzle table, which is a bonus. Um, so I, I'm just, I was just so excited to find it and it was actually on sale as well when I got it. I got it from Amazon. Um, I'm not going to do too much by way of a review on it. It's a Ravensburger. I've done Ravensburgers on the channel before. If there's any kind of glaring, you know, things that I notice uh, that are particularly good or not so great, then I will mention it. But I really am. I'm just going to just build this puzzle just for the joy of it and um, to to thank you for um, achieving 2000 subscribers on my channel. And I'll also go through, you know, kind of my method and how I go about building it as well, like I usually do. So I really hope you enjoy it. Um, so just getting started now on the sorting, I think I'll probably sort for a 2000 piece puzzle, getting started on the sorting for Universal by Ravensburger. Enjoy. Okay, so while I'm sorting, I thought I would talk a little about the movies represented on this puzzle. There are four in total, Jaws, E.T., The Extraterrestrial, Back to the Future and Jurassic Park. When I first got this puzzle, I thought it was a who's who of Steven Spielberg movies, and indeed three of the four were directed by Steven Spielberg. The odd one out is Back to the Future, which was directed by Robert Zemeckis. What they all have in common is that they were all made by Universal Studios, hence the puzzle name, Universal, and they were all massive hits at the time they were released and are still very popular today. Their years of release in chronological order are Jaws in 1975, E.T. in 1982, Back to the Future in 1985, and finally Jurassic Park in 1993. I'll talk a little bit more about the individual movies as I go along. Okay, so I've done a few Ravensburgers on the channel by now, so I don't have a great deal to say about the pieces other than what I've said in previous videos. Just a couple of observations I'll make, and that is that um, these pieces appear to be just slightly larger than I was expecting. Um, just kind of slightly larger than your average. That's fine, I mean they're not too big, but uh, that was just kind of an observation that I'll make. And also... Um, 
a lot, a lot of puzzle dust. I know that Ravensburgers can produce a lot of dust, and by and large, I don't really mind it. Um, but I had blue hands by the end of the sort. That's really it. Um, as far as a plan goes, uh, I've got the piles out ready that I'm going to work on first. So the way I'm approaching this one is rather than go from kind of smallest to largest, which is what I would ordinarily do, I'm going to start with the edges and I'm going to go through piles that may or may not be small. Um, but really, I'm just starting with the piles that are the most obvious. So this is the um, Jurassic Park gate. I couldn't mistake those pieces. When I found them, I knew they belonged to the gate. So that's quite a specific pile. I won't find any miscellaneous pieces in here. Um, it's just an obvious category of pieces to build and start with. Same with E.T. E.T.'s pieces were quite obvious when I found them. So I think they'll go together quite well. This pile is um, pieces with greenery on and also some of the some of the building at the bottom right. And again, it, although there's green kind of scattered across the puzzle, it was there were only so many green pieces and the green pieces had leaves and things. It, they were trees. So it wasn't like I was going to mistake it for other parts of the puzzle. So, yeah, so that's the way I'm sort of approaching this. Um, just tackling the most obvious categories first, starting with the edges. So E.T. is 40 years old this year in 2022, which makes it the same age as me. It was actually re-released on IMAX in August this year for its 40th anniversary. Um, here's a fact I didn't know about it. According to Wikipedia, the concept of E.T. was based on an imaginary friend that Spielberg created after his parents' divorce. Okay, so this is coming along really well. Um, there's a few bits with lightning with kind of a green background that are just sort of floating at, a, at the minute. So what I thought I would do next is I was going to grab the pieces from the DeLorean um, because I also put in quite a lot of lightning bolt pieces in here because the lightning is mostly concentrated sort of around the DeLorean. There is a little bit there and a bit at the top, but mostly it's around there. So I've kind of put all that together, but a lot of it, as you can see, crosses these green bits and this building here. So there's kind of overlap. So what I thought I would do was um, pull out these DeLorean pieces and try and maybe get some of the lightning bits in and the car together so that I can kind of fill out that corner a bit more. And then the other thing I wanted to do was the dinosaur after that and the dinosaur pieces are here in this box um again these were really obvious i could differentiate them quite easily from other parts of the puzzle it didn't look anything like the shark some similar teeth but even they were quite different so um those are going to be my next two piles i'm going to do the delorean and the dinosaur and um see if I can't, you know, get some of these loose sections slotted in uh, whilst I'm going about that. Back to the Future is probably my favourite of the four movies, although I do love them all. I love the action, I love the comedy elements, I love the soundtrack, and the DeLorean is just cool. Um, I think the dynamic between Michael J. Fox and Christopher Lloyd works really well as well. And speaking of Michael J. Fox, apparently he was not originally cast as Marty McFly. Instead, it was Eric Stoltz. 
Uh, again, according to Wikipedia, um, his view of the movie was far more serious than what Zemeckis intended for the movie. And also initially, uh, Michael J. Fox wasn't available for the movie. Uh, but that obviously all changed and ultimately Michael J. Fox took on the role instead of Stoltz and he had to um, re-record the scenes that had already been shot with Stoltz. Uh, it seems hard to imagine anyone except Michael J. Fox in that role now. Right, so I've pulled out all of the dinosaur pieces. Um, I'm just going to very quickly go through my sort of strategy with building this. Um, basically, I've separated the pieces out at the moment into um, these ones here, which are the tongue. Uh, and they're quite a distinctive sort of orangey colour. Um, I've put those ones to one side because they are like sort of the outline of the dinosaur where you can see its head against the sky. I've got an eyeball there. And then down here is everything I could find of the teeth. Forgive my, my tripods on the table at the moment, but uh, you can see here that I've separated kind of teeth uh, out as well. So I'm going to start by doing those. There's quite a lot of kind of scaly skin pieces, but I figure if I get these ones sort of removed from the equation, then it makes those ones a little bit more doable. And then I'll maybe kind of try and do it sort of te by texture and colour, because there's some obviously quite dark bits, which will go at the very edge here. Um, and then, you know, there are bits that kind of fade into like a brownie colour. So um, I'll maybe sort of work on those uh, by doing it that way. But anyway, just to start off with, we're going to do some of the main facial features. Yeah, so making a start on the T-Rex just now. Ah, Jurassic Park. I was 11 when this came out and subsequently it's the only one, I think, uh, that I actually saw at the cinema. I remember the queues to get in. It was so busy. Uh, one thing I didn't know about it is that it was based on a 1990 novel by Michael Crichton. Spielberg secured the film rights for it, and at the time it became the highest grossing film ever, and it held that record for four years until Titanic came out in 1997. Uh, when it was re-released for its 20th anniversary in 2013, it achieved another record, the oldest film in history to surpass $1 billion in ticket sales. Lastly, we have Jaws. Uh, this was also based on a novel and also held the highest grossing film record at the time, uh, which was surpassed two years later by Star Wars. Uh, it was apparently also the first major motion picture to be shot on the ocean. Um, perhaps one of its most iconic elements uh, is that sinister music created by John Williams. Uh, apparently there were quite a few problems with the mechanical sharks made for the movie and so the presence of the shark was in large part suggested by the ominous music. Uh, John Williams also scored the Jurassic Park and the E.T. music, but I think we can all agree that the Back to the Future soundtrack by Alan Silvestri is equally as iconic as all of the others. Uh, Back to the Future, incidentally, is also the only film to have been reimagined as a stage musical. Well, I tell you, this puzzle is so much fun and it's flying together, or at least it feels like it is. Um, I'd say I'm past halfway now. Uh, it's coming together really well. So I've, I've got pretty much a done T-Rex. There were a few um, of these kind of neck pieces in the water bit. Not sure where that one's gone. Uh, I need to have a hunt for that. Um, the shark. Uh, well, the water was sort of tricky. I think I've got a couple of water pieces in with the moon. And um, I sort of started to do the shark as well so I could try and get the rest of the water pieces in because they were sort of merging together. And I thought oh, it makes sense to just start the shark. Now, there's the tip of the shark's um, nose is um, 
quite a sort of a medium blue it's sort of smooth so again i think there's probably a few of those in the sky uh pile of pieces um there's a dark one there that's probably in the sky bit as well so yes yeah, so there's just bits and bobs where there's still a few gaps but i think now the only piles of pieces i've got left are this one this is leftovers from all the other piles we've done so some sky in here um possibly some moon pieces as well this box here is all the moon pieces which um i'm leaving this till last i think it'll be quite difficult but we do have um, Elliot on the bike with E.T. flying across it. So, you know, there'll be that that I can put together as kind of a centre point and then hopefully just fill in the rest uh, around the outside of that. This box here is the last pile of pieces I've got left and this is Sky Pieces. Now, I just love the colour of these pieces. Um, if you turn them over, there's a lot of backing board you can see but like some of it's just lovely dark blues some purple in there um really lovely colors so um what i'm going to do is i'm going to do the sky next and i'll be filling out this top corner behind the t-rex's head this bit here there's actually a helicopter flying around here which i put in the sky bits um so i'll be filling out everything basically except for the moon uh so at the end of this there should hopefully be a big circle and all being well i will have fiddled out a few gaps whilst i am at it so um yeah i just will just keep moving on with it finished! There is a shark in the water, the dinosaurs are running wild, E.T. has phoned home and the DeLorean has gone back to the future. This puzzle was so much fun. It, it didn't even feel like a 2000 piece puzzle, it just seemed to come together so quickly and it was impossible to put down. It felt like it was a puzzle that was just impossible to put down and uh, insofar as you can put a puzzle down. I just... When I started doing it, I just wanted to keep on going and going and going and going. And so it, it was just so good. I knew that it would be decent quality. Ravensburger did not let me down on that score. Um, but I think the main reason why I loved it so much was just the image. Putting together all these different elements from my favourite childhood movies made me feel such nostalgia when I was doing it and it just it, I think really it was the image just doing this image I had such fun with it. I actually found that this came together quite easily there wasn't any particular bit that I found really really hard I think that the um the, the, some of the piles of pieces could have could have been potentially problematic uh, like the water pieces and the moon pieces ones that were similar in color 
But I think that what helped with that was the order in which I did the, the piles of pieces. So because I left the water till almost near the end and then the moon until the very end, any potential sort of mix up in the pieces, I could just rectify it right away. And so, you know, there was no part of it that I really felt stuck on or particularly overly challenged by. That's not to say it wasn't fun. I still had great fun with it. Um, but, you know, it maybe wasn't as hard as as it might look. Um, the bit that slowed me down the most, I would say, is probably the sky pieces. I think just because the sky is kind of between all the different sections, it's sort of all over and it's all different shades of blue and purple and gray and dark blue and light blue so but there was you know not one single place where there was light blue there were more than one spot where that was and more than one spot where there was kind of purple in the sky so you know that was perhaps something that slowed me down a little bit i did do a bit of shape sorting on that made it a little bit easier but there was no part of this puzzle that i found particularly laborious um I think my favourite bit to build was the T-Rex. I actually, um, I think with the T-Rex it had just enough texture to keep it interesting and it was a good sizeable chunk of this um, top corner here in front of me and I just, I just, I didn't have to keep moving around, it was just in one place and it was just fun just sitting and just putting it together. Um, so that was probably my favourite bit, followed closely by the moon uh, with Elliot Neaty on the bike in the middle. I thought that was quite satisfying because it was the bit I did last and there was just this kind of circle and it was just satisfying watching it fill in um, and doing the bike in the middle as well. Um, it was just really satisfying to do. I also think it's quite funny that Elliot and E.T. look as though they're about to be gobbled up uh, by either a shark or a T-Rex. <laughs> um, they're just like right in the line of fire of these two big gaping moors. Um, I just think that looks kind of funny. But, um, but no, um, I don't really have a lot more to say than that about this particular puzzle. I think I'm gonna try now doing a puzzle pickup on it. I've never done a, a puzzle pickup on a 2000 piece puzzle before, so it's gonna be interesting to see what happens. Um, I hope it doesn't fall apart. I hope it kind of um, stands the pickup, but even if it does, it's not such a big deal. I am gonna take this puzzle apart, put it back in the box, and I'll probably keep it for a while. Um, this this is definitely a puzzle that I could do again. And there aren't many puzzles I can say that about, but I would, you know, given enough time, I would put this away and then one day just pull it out and build it again. I, I, it, it is one of those puzzles that I could do that with. Um, I enjoyed it so much. Uh, but yeah, so I'll stop rambling on about it. I'm gonna try the puzzle pick up just now and we'll see how it goes. Uh, right, I've just gotta move my iPad off it. Um, and I can lift it up. I'm gonna move the chair out of the way. Just so I've got plenty of space. Okay, so here we go. Puzzle pick up on a 2000 piece Ravensburger Universal puzzle. Ta-da! That's pretty solid. That stayed together really, really well. I've just shaken a lot of dust onto my table, but still, that's pretty cool. Puzzle pickup on the 2000 piece puzzle, a success. Oh, I've just, I've just broken it a tiny bit on the, um, on the put down, uh, but it's like literally four pieces have come out. So it's not irreparable. Oh, except one's got stuck underneath. Um, here we go. So that one, that one, that one, and that one. So yes, a uh, <laughs> little bit of a problem with the re-entry, but uh, that was absolutely fine. It stays together really, really well. And I must admit, I was able to move sections around and stuff with no problem. It wasn't crumpling apart. So just a really, really good puzzle. I would highly recommend this to anyone um, who likes Ravensburgers, who likes these movies, even anyone who, you know, maybe would like to try a slightly larger puzzle, but not go too big. Um, a 2000 piece puzzle is a really good size for that. And actually I, I really enjoyed I really enjoyed it as a 2000 piece because I do tend to like the larger puzzles and actually 2000 pieces fits on my table, which is a bonus. So um, yeah, I would highly recommend this. I think it was brilliant. Um, I'm just gonna pull my chair back 
and um, before I, I sort of close the video off, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who has um, given me their questions for the forthcoming Q&A video that I'm going to do. Um, I have had quite a few questions, so thanks to everybody for that. But if you um, if you do have any, if you've not posted a question and you do have one, um, then please do either put it in the comments in this video if you want to, or if you have a look on my community tab, I put a post up there uh, just asking if anybody had any questions and you can answer that um, in there if you wish to do that. Um, and similarly, if you have any questions about this puzzle that I haven't answered, um, then please do leave a comment about that as well. Um, otherwise, I'm going to say thank you so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Leave a like if you have, and please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. But in the meantime, I shall say goodbye, and I will see you next time.